Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Master Paul. I'm very grateful to be connecting with you today. It is a Wednesday, and I want to say it's July 12. The year is going very, very fast. For those that are just tuning in or just scrolling through, today we'll be focusing on the subject called Divine Flexibility. And uh, although it might sound very simple on the surface, it's actually something that a great deal of us do not have. So I encourage you to stick around. It could be one of those great teachings that assist you from not having so much stress in your life. Okay? So that will be the subject matter for today for all those that are just tuning in for the first time or just scrolling through and wondering if this is something of value to them or not. So um, today I uh, woke up early. I had quite a few responsibilities to take care of was able to get them done and get back in time and one of the reasons why that worked was because of being flexible with uh, divine timing which is uh, another thing that falls in line with divine flexibility so we're going to touch on both those today uh, see if it makes a little more sense to you the last couple days has been very valuable a lot of people very much appreciative of the question and answer forum uh, of how to apply soul power and uh, if you followed my live streams or if you have not, uh, I am a master, certified master teacher of the Tao Institute. And um, as a result, I have become very well uh, educated and trained in the understanding and application of soul and soul power. And um, yesterday, the last two days, uh, were dedicated to teaching people how to apply it very simply in their life. There's so many layers to soul power. I, I only scraped the surface. Uh, that's why I've been doing these live streams for a long, long time, over a year now, and that's why I have such a, a loyal following because their lives have very positively been impacted, and they're very grateful for that, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve. So I encourage those that are new to hang around. I think you'll enjoy it. So we've got a few folks joining us. Welcome to Doris Bonet. Welcome Ali Fess. Welcome also to Candy, and welcome Kristen Rojas. Aloha Kristen Strachan. Welcome also to Brianna Steiteller, and welcome to Jess Christensen. Thank everybody for hitting the share button, letting the other people know about this. Aloha Anthea Marie, thank you for joining today. I think I saw your name a, a day or two ago, right Anthea? Or is this your first time? Uh, welcome Atina. Aloha and welcome to Udwani Nita. Thank you for joining today. Welcome Kate Nicole. Must have been having some strange hours, Kate. I'm going to see you very often now. Aloha Elizabeth. And welcome Kristen. Welcome to uh, Shelly. Aloha. Welcome Lut. Lut must be a European name. We don't get that one over here in America too much. I like the name Lut. You know, roll it off your tongue. Welcome to Linda Jansen. Aloha and welcome to uh, everybody else that is just joining. I'll connect with you in just a little bit. So today, as has been discussed, will be about divine flexibility. And as I was tuning in, uh, asking heaven for some guidance on this subject matter and why they chose it. And this morning, as I was asking them, you know, what should I uh, teach on? And instantly what popped in my head was divine flexibility. So I'm guessing that there are uh, activities happening in each of your lives that require a bit of that. And so we'll cover a little bit more of that today. <laughs> I see somebody say, yep, early morning shifts. Welcome Janice. Aloha. Welcome also to, oh, second time. Okay, good. And then uh, Desaya, Jada Jade. Welcome Ju uh, Julia, welcome Jenny Johansson, aloha. So um, let us go ahead and I'll uh, pontificate for just a few more minutes here uh, while we let more people join and then we're going to connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Aloha, see love, how's baby doing? Baby's probably what, about uh, four or five months old now. Probably growing like a weed at this point. So yesterday, um, we were at the center, uh, at Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center here in Honolulu, 
<clears throat> and there was a great deal of service being offered with the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. Um, Master Francisco is in town visiting us. So for those that are enjoying this wisdom, this teaching, someone like to get um, truly potent uh, uh, versions of it and, uh, and a deep depth of understanding with a very high level of love, you might want to uh, consider coming to the Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, workshop here in Honolulu. Friday is free, so you can attend that at 6, 6 30 to 8 30 p.m. Uh, Hawaii time. So add three hours in the Pacific zone and add six hours in the Eastern zone, but it would be about 6 30 a.m. in the European zone. So uh, if you can make that, I highly recommend you go to drsha.com forward slash Hawaii. And you can register there for the free evening Friday and then the whole day Saturday and Sunday. Very, very affordable. Uh, for both days and it's truly a remarkable way to expand your soul journey and awaken quite a bit more so welcome also to Lauren Kay welcome Deborah Anderson <clears throat> let us go ahead and get connected we're gonna start by placing our hands in soul light soul service hand position which is a hand mudra so for those that are listening on podcast let us drop our hands in front of our message center left hand and the right hand remains pointed towards heaven and we will close our eyes and fully connect invite in the beings of light and move forward with today's wisdom teachings and blessings. Dear our beloved divine, divine creator, to the soul of divine flexibility, the soul of divine timing, the soul of the highest wisdom that can be shared at this time, could you please come? Dear all beings of light serving the planet of the light side, including angels and healing angels, archangels, masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifas, saints, buddhas and bodhisattvas, Beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, all the beings of light, stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, we love you, honor you, respect you all. We ask for your presence at this time to serve in whatever is highest, best, and most appropriate at this time. We ask for your blessings today to further awaken each and every one of us that is watching and each and every one of us that, um, that is practicing to align to heaven's timing to heaven's guidance, to heaven's wisdom, to heaven's um, very special processes. We ask that you open our hearts and souls that we might further develop our message centers and receive your guidance as appropriate. Thank you. So I will uh, offer a blessing at this time. I'm going to chant love, peace, and harmony, but I'm going to add a couple of treasures to that I've received some extraordinary uh, transmissions and I will turn them on and I will offer everyone a blessing to open their heart and soul okay so give me a moment well you guys are gonna be so blessed okay close your eyes prepare to receive don't don't make a request at this time this is to open your heart and soul okay Eya hiyo, 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 eya hiyo. For those that are just tuning in. I'm offering a blessing at this time to open your heart and soul and close your eyes, receive the blessings. For those that are tuning in, you've come in in the middle of a blessing. Close your eyes, continue to receive. This blessing is to open your heart and soul. I love my heart. 
and so I love all humanity join hearts and souls together love peace and harmony love peace and harmony how 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 thank you thank you thank you treasures that I've sent out please return you are all very blessed <clears throat> this is uh, uh, the the treasures that you receive blessings for I've paid many thousands of dollars for uh, so this was a huge blessing open your heart and soul so today's teachings will be on divine flexibility so let us be flexible while I acknowledge those who came in in this last five or ten minutes. Aloha to Helena. Aloha and welcome to Deborah Anderson, Jennifer Jennison, Jennifer Caress Smith. Aloha. Welcome Sanjita. Welcome Don. Welcome Tina Yates. Welcome Jax. Aloha Sasha and Aloha Danette. Welcome also to Nelson. And welcome Tony Seymour. Yes, you're very welcome. Honored to serve. Okay. Get myself in a little cross leg position here. Better. You're very welcome. So, what is divine flexibility? Divine flexibility has not necessarily been explained in Master Shah's teachings. Uh, he hasn't written it out in a book anywhere and said this is what divine flexibility is. Instead, it's been an action in motion. Uh, Aloha, Laura Hickman. It's been the application of divine flexibility in the moment. And most of the times I've witnessed it um, in the learning process of what it is, is when I'm in the presence of my spiritual teacher and father, Master Shah. And for example, how many of you make plans uh, to the degree where you know you 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 set your schedule to it? This is this has to be done this time. This has to be done this time. You know, these are my plans. Uh, most of us do, and this is the beginning of where our <laughs> much of our suffering occurs a great deal of our stress and a great deal of our irritations um, <clears throat> the car could break down the kids could be late one of them could have an attitude there's a variety of reasons why things change when we make plans uh, welcome to Shannon welcome Tony Seymour Aloha Aloha also to uh, to Lori welcome and Andrea thank you for joining I hope you uh, stick around the whole time this is be a very valuable experience and so when we make plans there's a great intention behind it to achieve a certain experience and that experience might be to uh, to not disappoint somebody how many of us have disappointment karma right uh, we're either constantly disappointing people because we're never quote there on time or um, we uh, do our best and uh, we're, we're, we are always in a timely manner and we are constantly disappointed with ourselves when we are not, uh, you know, thunk, 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 right on time. Most of us sit in one of the other categories. We're chronically late or we're right on time and we're irritated when other people don't honor and respect that. So this is all about life programming more than anything. Uh, this is about how we grew up. Now, I grew up more on the side of honor and respect and being there in a timely manner. It doesn't mean that other people don't have that intention. It just means that, you know, life gets in the way and they don't get there in time. And some people, they're just chronically late and, and they could do better, but that's just the nature of who they are. 
and that may be, uh, they're all versions of ego in many ways uh, because speaking for myself, why do I want to be there on time? Why do I want to be respectful? Because if I be there on time and I'm respectful, then I look good. And if I look good, then that's going to be beneficial to me in the long run, right? So that's a form of ego. Another form of ego would be not getting there on time. Why? Because you don't want to be controlled. You want to be in control of your time, not have somebody else control you. That's also a form of ego. So these may have layers of subtlety to them, but they're all there no matter how you want to look at it. So these are just examples in which divine flexibility and divine timing uh, can have a very positive impact on our life. Now, you've heard me speaking before about the nature of uh, soul and soul power and alignment and forgiveness practice and all these things. We've covered many, many bases there. A lot of what I try to do in these live streams is, is share with you how to use this wisdom in everyday life so that we can process through the various stresses that come to us, the various people that enter our lives in, um, in, um, in ways that were unexpected. Okay, Very often we have people enter our lives that, um, that create positivity and value in our life. And some people <laughs> enter our lives and they challenge us. Uh, and what do they do? They interrupt our pattern. I enjoy patterns. Uh, I fall out of patterns sometimes, but I enjoy the, the dependability of, of, of uh, being able to get up at this time and watch something at this time and prepare for something at this time. Patterns allow us to get things done the way we need to. So I'm not saying that patterns aren't good. I enjoy them. What tends to happen though is our stress levels tend to go up substantially when things fall out of pattern or when we do not have divine flexibility, when we do not allow for divine timing. Welcome Aspasia, Aloha Mital Shah, welcome Shannon Molina, uh, welcome also to Petra Marie Lennon and Wayne, welcome Wayne, welcome Aaron, and also welcome to uh, all the other souls that I might have missed mentioning their name. So when we um, are challenged because we have set up expectations, we have set up patterns, we have set up uh, conditions in which we find ourselves not meeting these conditions, we eventually get into a place of stress. So you can use any number of examples, not getting to work on time, um, uh, not getting anywhere on time for that matter, and all of the possible things that could happen as a result of not quote doing something or getting there on time. So all of the potentials create in us a massive stress. Just the thinking about what could happen if I don't get there on time creates a great deal of stress for us. Have you ever noticed that? Okay. Um, attachments to outcomes, right? You do all this certain work so that you can uh, be seen and approved and validated and get the thumbs up and get the raise or get the whatever it is that you have the attachment to receiving for all the work that you're putting your efforts into. And those are what's called attachments. We all have them. Attachments is uh, an expectation as well. Um, why do we have attachments? Because well, why do anything if there's not some, some benefit for doing it, right? Do you think that Buddha or Jesus did something with an expectation or an attachment for anything in return? And so it's, it's um, obviously not the easiest path. Easy to talk about, not so easy to follow. In other words, whatever we do should not be done for something in return, uh, even as, if it's as simple as doing your quote J-O-B, right? Doing the J-O-B should be something that we do with joy regardless of all those around us that might not make us so joyful. And if we truly don't enjoy that job, then we need to uh, connect with heaven and uh, work through some of the soul power practices to create a manifested job that you do enjoy doing. But even if the job you're currently not enjoying doing, most likely it's not because of the job itself, it's because of your attitude about the job in this example. Okay, And so you can change that, you have free will, you have control over these things. Divine timing and divine flexibility typically 
uh, uh, give us opportunities to employ them in our lives, especially when we have expectations and when we're running on schedules. Um, patience, I saw somebody mention I have difficulty with patience. When we When we react, which is almost always what occurs, uh, to an event, an experience where somebody or something is not doing things in the manner or timely uh, that we have an expectation to, or something did not occur the way we're hoping and expecting, and then we have a reaction, it is in that point right there where we need to apply divine flexibility and divine timing. Now I'm going to stick here now because it's more than just the cute little words, divine flexibility and divine timing. Of course, that would mean, you know, being flexible. Sounds cute. Sounds like the right thing to do. There's a whole lot more going on in the background because what this wisdom, what this teaching is, is to remind us that although we are co-creators in this thing called life, we do not see even a little bit with the degree of clarity and the degree of um, the highest and best benefit to us as the soul world does. Okay? The soul world always knows what's coming up. Heaven, our heaven's teams, guides, angels, and saints, our own soul, they always know what's coming up. They know that if, for example, you're late, that you will miss this and this and that, but as a result, you may get a phone call between here and the arrival of where you were intended to be. And because you weren't there, uh, you could assist the person that called you and maybe save their life. There is so many things that heaven sees that we don't see. And when we start working with divine timing, we start changing our brain. We start changing the way we look at things and choose to look at them the way the divine looks at them. We choose to look at them through divine eyes. It's a conscious process, certainly not easy to do, and most likely will, will require 100 uh, errors and catching oneself again and again, uh, already knee deep in the reaction. But regardless of how deep you are in the reaction or the irritation or the response, we need to stop and we need to remind ourselves that everything happens in divine timing, that there is divine flexibility, that there is a plan that uh, you're not fully aware of at the moment and that any negative response, any negative reaction is not going to benefit anyone. It's not going to benefit those you step into 10 minutes from now. It's not going to benefit the child whose ear you want to pull out of their head. It's not going to benefit your uh, future creations because your present moment irritation and negativity negatively impacts your future creations. There's nothing about it that will be positively benefited. So yes, of course, consciousness is, is, is very relevant, but we must uh, choose more and more and more to trust our beloved divine teams, our creator, because we're not here by accident. We are souls having a physical experience, not the other way around, but we live life as if it's the other way around. Yeah, we're a physical experience and oh yeah, I think I got a soul. <laughs> That's That unfortunately represents a good 90% of humanity. Let's try not to be that 90%. Let's instead be the soul having a physical experience, one that strives for releasing and reducing anything that creates unnecessary stress or attention to stress. Because the wisdom will always come to us through the remainder of this life. It's just one of those things, and it's unless you are um, a very, very blessed soul where you have zero problems in your life, they're going to continue to come to us. And even when we don't really have problems, we will have these kinds of challenges about things not happening in the highest, best and timely manner. Now, one of the first lessons I experienced with my teacher, Master Shah, was at retreats. 
and uh, something that you and I and 99% of the people on this planet, if we witnessed, we would all judge it as bad. We would say, oh, you know, oh, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. Um, you know, something spilling all over the stage, something falling and, you know, stuff everywhere, just uh, all over the floor, right? Um, somebody trips. And we would immediately label it as a bad thing. Well, what I witnessed my teacher do over and over again is he would say, where it was appropriate, he would say, ah, blessings. When anything, it didn't matter what it was, if anything spilled, he would say, wonderful financial blessings. It's, it's, it's like a mantra now. Uh, the people at the healing center I go to, at my house, if anything spilled, doesn't matter. You know, financial blessings. Somebody dropped a huge five-gallon jug. They were carrying a five-gallon jug. And it hit the floor and the whole building shook. Unfortunately, it didn't break. I was really disappointed. I even said that. I'm like, oh, man, we could have had huge financial blessings. Everybody laughed, right? It's perspective. Why did the teacher... He didn't teach us that. He simply taught through action. He instantly went from reaction of, oh, my God, to financial blessings. It's how we look at things. When we acknowledge divine timing, when we acknowledge divine flexibility, what happens is we change our present moment and the future. We disallow stress. We disallow all those things that tend to drive us crazy. And it forces you, if you want to grow, uh, it forces you to address your self-created ego stuff okay showing of hands how many people have significant blockages about being someplace in a timely manner right and it just irritates the heck out of them when people aren't respectful people aren't honoring people don't you know the, how dare they disrespect me that way you know who are these who do these people think they are there's a lot of people that fit into that category i used to be you know one of those blaming people now i'm just like oh, it is what it is but I had to go through the process of unwinding those kinds of perspectives. So that person that's arriving late uh, to the job or whatever it might be, do you really think that it's something that they're consciously controlling? No different than you're consciously controlling your reaction. You, you're not consciously controlling your action. It's unconscious, right? They are not consciously controlling their lack or lack of arrival on a timely manner either. And there's people that try and you know, they go see psychotherapists to try to be on time. What are the roots, right? The roots are typically ego-based. They're typically attachment-based. Things that we don't want to give up or, or things that we have attachments to. Because it makes us look good or feel good or that's what we've been taught to believe somehow. We witness our, our parents being upset about people not being on time, therefore we adopt that. Or some of us are opposite children. We like, well, well, if it irritates the parents, I'm going to piss them off. And so we don't come on time. It depends on the upbringing. But um, we all have the ways we develop our egos. Well, now we move into that condition where um, as a aspirant on the spiritual journey, we want to take a look at things from a much, much higher perspective. Because it's truly... Even though we've adopted these ways of responding and reacting and being, it's truly um, not serving our soul journey moving forward. Because as an awakened being, we have to be responsible for our thoughts, our words, our actions, and our creations. And guess what causes our creations? Our thoughts, our words, our actions. Voila! So it begins with choosing not to think negatively, react negatively, or make an action that is negative as a result of what we witnessed. And these are two very key areas that we can do that in. Okay? So, the opportunities are pretty much endless. What would be very good for each of you, and the task that I would offer to each of you, is to learn to laugh at these kinds of things. Now, granted, it might take a hundred times, but learn to laugh more each time. Learn to laugh, get to the point where you laugh instead of react. You're probably gonna react 
and then process backwards for the first 20, 30, 30, 40, 50 times. But eventually, you'll get to the point where you laugh before you react. Uh, and you'll just see it. Ah. Then, once you can start to laugh, you, you change your perspective on it. It's very, very important to add that positive turn to it. Why did my teacher, Master Shah, say, ah, oh, financial blessings? It changed everybody's perspective. Instantly, he trained 400 people in one statement, and that potentially impacted all of the family members, all of the children, all of the people around those people. So whenever those 400 students that witness that, that apply, because we all apply it, um, whenever other people spill anything, we state that now we affect this consciousness. Is that good for humanity? Yes, of course. Is complaining good for you or humanity? No, of course not. So we're affecting a much larger ripple just by that one consciousness shift. And this is a simple step in which we can apply it. Okay? Give me a moment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a, uh, a forgiveness practice for releasing our attachments. Um, Adwana, you need to watch the last two days of teachings because they teach you how to deal with miserable life experiences. Um, it was in my questions and answers. So we're going to do a practice right now and we're going to call forth these attachments and these stress points and we're going to do forgiveness around bringing those stresses upon others and then bringing those stresses upon us. We're going to forgive them and well, then we're going to uh, do a blessing amongst ourselves so that we can clear some of these blockages and we're going to plant a new seed so that we can consciously um, make better choices. All right? Aloha, guys. Thank you for coming. Whoever had to leave, thank you so much. Aloha. So let us start by placing our hands in the hand mudra, soul light, soul service hand position, dropping our left hand in front of our message heart center, and the right hand remains pointed towards heaven. Let us close our eyes, and I'll walk you through this forgiveness practice, okay? This is an example, but it's always good. And that's actually very good when you catch yourself, you know, reacting, responding, right? Uh, coming from that place of irritation. Just know that it is, it is an attachment, it is an ego aspect, and that it is, if you're reacting, you're not allowing for divine flexibility, you're not allowing for divine timing. Laugh and then do a quick forgiveness practice, okay? It doesn't have to be uh, like the one I'm going to do, but, you know, please forgive me, heaven, please forgive me to the souls that I'm being finding myself irritated towards. I do, uh, I'm recognizing that my irritation um, is has been self-created, that I'm blaming you for irritating me. Uh, please forgive me, right? This is where you need to head with this wisdom. Okay. Welcome, Abby Lynn. So let us close our eyes and let us work through this uh, practice and blessing. So please, if you are comfortable, repeat after me. Dear all souls that I or my ancestors have communicated with in a way that has caused them to be stressed or irritated. If I have had a pattern in this early lifetime where I consistently was disrespectful of your expectations that I would be there at a certain time or a time we agreed to, please forgive me. If I, in this early lifetime, was dishonoring or uh, not respectful in my explanation to you, if I allowed my ego to be more important than this respect for honoring the time that we had predetermined to be meeting. Please forgive me. To the soul of my parents, my mother, father, my siblings, brothers and sisters, and all of my peers in this lifetime that have taught me a certain way of being and responding in my expectations 
and in my timeliness or lack thereof. I love you. I wish to offer you my unconditional forgiveness if you have taught me in such a way that it was not honoring and respectful of others. Also, I wish to ask for forgiveness if I have been uh, not honoring of you, your time, or responsibilities. Dear all souls in all time, if I have created thoughts, words, or conditions in which you had attachments, attachments to things happening a certain way, things happening at a certain time, attachments to a certain expectation of results, if I have caused you to believe by my thoughts, words, or actions that you were to expect something and then I failed to provide those for you. I sincerely apologize to all the souls that have caused me strife, stress, because I had expectations from them. Maybe they made a promise and they did not fulfill that. They said, I will be there at this time and they did not come. Please accept my unconditional forgiveness. I release you all fully and completely of all the times that you were not able to fulfill our agreements and any times that expectations were made that were unfulfilled, I offer you my unconditional forgiveness. Dear all the souls that have been, uh, that have been harmed by any of these actions, Please forgive me. I forgive you. I ask heaven, I ask my heaven's team to please bless me to open my heart and soul to the knowingness of divine timing, to release attachment to outcomes and expectations, to not have an attachment that it will happen the way I expect and when I expect it. Please allow me to be flexible that it may happen before or after I was looking forward to it. Please allow me to be flexible to how whatever I am expecting will come to me. That if it comes differently than what I expect or at a different time than what I expect that I look forward to the divine flexibility and the divine timing with the knowingness that heaven has a plan and that I am just not fully attuned yet. Dear Shah's golden healing ball, could you please come from heaven, come to sit in my body. Please spin in whatever direction you desire to. And as you are spinning, please clear my mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, ego, and attachments that inhibit me from having divine flexibility and honoring divine timing. I am very, very grateful. Thank you. So we have just invited Shah's Golden Healing Ball, which is a special treasure in heaven. And anybody can invite it at any time. It's already subdivided and come to each of you. And we're going to chant Shah's Golden Healing Ball. What I'd like you to visualize as little, uh, visualize whatever fits you. But I like to see like little, these little dark spots, you know, in different cells and in my brain cells and whatnot. They represent attachment. They represent um, all the blockages, the mindsets, attitudes and beliefs. And I like to see them getting scrubbed and washed with this golden light, the spinning light ball. So let us chant, visualizing this, seeing the light, knowing that it's clearing the blockages. Shah's golden healing ball, 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 blesses my brain. Shah's golden healing ball releases ego. Shah's golden healing ball blesses my brain. 
Shah's golden healing ball releases my ego. Shah's golden healing ball releases negativity. Shah's golden healing ball releases negativity. Shah's golden healing ball releases mindsets. 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 Shah's golden healing ball releases attachments. 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 Shah's golden healing ball releases attitudes. 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 Shah's golden healing ball releases attachments. 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 Shah's golden healing ball releases expectations. 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 Shah's golden healing ball blesses my life. 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 Shah's golden healing ball opens my heart. 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 Shah's golden healing ball brings divine timing. 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 Shah's golden healing ball brings divine flexibility. 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 Shah's golden healing ball blesses my life. Shah's golden healing ball blesses my life. Shah's golden healing ball releases reactions. 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 Shah's golden healing ball brings joy into my life. Shah's golden healing ball brings joy into my life. Shah's golden healing ball brings joy into my life. Shah's golden healing ball brings joy into my life. 
Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball, Shah's golden healing ball. Ha, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. The big way is extremely simple. A lot of people get stuck in, um, for example, we probably lost one or two people just because I started singing. Because ego, oh, you can't, you know, singing, really? This was good until the man started singing. Some people really liked it. The big way is extremely simple. It's a Tao statement. Just simply chanting changes the negative message to a positive message. The last few days we talked about soul power and I gave you some examples of soul power. Uh, I explained how power can be transmitted to books, objects, things, music, etc. Uh, Shaw's Golden Healing Ball is one example of soul power. Uh, it is an extraordinary treasure that resides in heaven that can be called upon any time. If I were you, I'd teach it to your children because you can ask, you can teach them to use it to to call to them to increase their intelligence, to help them when they pass a test or something like that. And you know, children are very innocent. Uh, it, they should believe it because it's believable. You know, if they have third eye, you can see it; it comes. But children. Uh, will call Shaw's Golden Healing Ball. Shaw's Golden Healing Ball will come. It will clear blockages and help them to remember the test questions. It will increase their intelligence. It will do whatever, in essence, we ask it to do because it's a treasure that's been transmitted to serve humanity. It's just one of, of, of hundreds of soul healing treasures. Um, there is a book that you may or may not have. It is called Divine Healing and Transmission System. And uh, I don't have it to show you at the moment. Uh, but the reason I'm mentioning it is because in there, Master Shah, my, my teacher, transmits power uh, into some um, soul mind body transmissions. So if you read the text, because it's bolded text, then you actually receive that transmission. What are those transmissions for? Removing negative mindsets, removing negative attitudes, removing negative beliefs, ego, and attachments. Sounds important, doesn't it? So these are available complimentary uh, in any of his books. And you can pick that one up probably a couple of dollars off Amazon if you go to the used ones. But the transmissions are only valuable if you use them. So when you uh, read the transmissions and, you, uh, tra and they download into your, onto your uh, soul, um, they're basically their servants, all souls are servants, and they carry extraordinary light. And that light is specific to releasing negative mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, ego, and attachments. So all you got to do is turn it on and ask it to clear blockages uh, while you chant love, peace, and harmony or, or Shah's Golden Healing Bar or whatever else you want to chant. So there are many, many different ways in which soul power can benefit you. Um, today is simply an opportunity to be able to um, have more in your life. So I'm going to uh, now offer everybody a blessing. so that you can assist yourself in clearing some of these blockages. This will be a two-minute blessing. Um, if you are uh, blessed and you, you have the um, uh, ability to honor for a crown chakra blessing for removing negative mindsets or negative attitudes or negative beliefs or ego or attachments, do you recommend it? They're very beneficial. They transform blockages very, very fast. Uh, the uh, crown chakra blessings, they clear what would take you about a hundred years to clear in about two minutes. So they're available if you're interested. You can go to my website and find out more. But I'm going to offer you a blessing at this time uh, for um, aligning your heart and soul to divine timing. Okay, aligning your heart and soul to divine timing and divine flexibility. And this this will assist you um, with learning to laugh a little bit more and apply some of the things we talked about. Aloha and welcome, Steve. And everybody else, if I haven't acknowledged you, welcome. Close your eyes, prepare to receive. This blessing is as appropriate to all those watching, all those listening on the podcast. From this point to the future, whenever they listen, this is for uh, opening your heart and soul 
to divine flexibility and divine timing. Blessing begin. Hey, uh, hey, oh, hey, uh, hey, oh. Thank you. Thank you to my treasure. Please return. Okay, so I hope that today's uh, wisdom, teaching, and blessings, Tao wisdom and teaching and blessings has served you. I offer my deep gratitude to my spiritual father, Master Shah, for bringing this wisdom to humanity. Um, Kristen has posted a link to, uh, to that book if you're interested. I just mention it because, you know, one of the beautiful things about Master Shah is he provides so many free blessings. Those books are loaded with them. And it's just one more way to clear our own uh, karma. So, very grateful for everybody joining. Thank you, Joyce Ann, for your uh, comments. Uh, aloha, everyone. If you've come in a little bit late, uh, truly recommend you come back and watch the recordings, which will start shortly. If you've enjoyed this and you want to know when I go live, hit the subscribe button and you'll know. Uh, depending on how Facebook works, you'll know when I go live. Also, uh, do enjoy my website. There's a lot of good information on there. And if you have significant pain, significant suffering, significant depression, anything major, then make sure you pay attention to, to my services on my website because I truly only deal with stuff that's hard to, to work with. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye, everybody. Mahalo.